Hi, and welcome to the next video of this KNX video series. It's great to have you on my channel. In the last video, we edited our first KNX project. So we added a push button sensor, a switching actuator. We also set up the building structure and the topology. And now in this video, we want to program our first KNX function with KNX virtual. So let us start with that after the intro. So I'm back here in the EDS6 in the project that we created in the last videos. And here we already imported a KNX push button sensor, this clicks device. And then we also imported a switching actuator. And now we want that they communicate with each other so that we can turn on and turn off the light with the simulated push button sensor. Therefore, we first of all have to check if the group objects that are available by those devices can be connected with each other. Therefore, let us take a look at the push button sensor. There we have eight different channels. So one channel per push button. And for the channel one, we already set up that we want to have a switching group object as well as a feedback object. So in the parameters under channel one, we set the function here to switching feedback black red. So black red just means that it simulates an LED which is turned off and turned on and then it shows the text in red. Then in the switching actuator, let's take a look. We already set up this device because here we also have eight channels, one channel per switching output. And here you can see for channel one, we also have two objects one on off object and one info on off object. So you can see here we have two objects and here two objects. Therefore, we need two group addresses, one for switching and one for feedback. Therefore, let us create them. So I go here to workplace, then open up a new panel, group addresses. And now here I can create the group addresses that I need. Therefore, I will start with the central functions, which I don't need for now, but later on we might use it. Therefore, I will already create it. Then we have the lightning. And this should be it for now. So creating it and then we can add our middle groups, switching. And I will already create dimming as well as dimming value. Here yeah, the same, we don't need it for now, but later on we, we might need it. Then we have the feedback, switching, as well as feedback, dimming. So what does it mean? Well, in the middle group one zero, I want all of my group addresses that are for switching the light on and off. In one one, I will have all my group addresses for dimming. One two is for dimming value. So for example, for a touch panel where I can dim the light to an exact value via a slider. Then we have the feedback for switching as well as the feedback dimming. So where the actuators will tell on which value they are currently. So now that we created the middle groups, we can create our group addresses. But let me first of all check where these devices sit. Therefore, I go to the line devices. So the push button sensor was in the office. Therefore, I will create a group address with the name office. And then I will also create a group address here in feedback switching, also called office. With that, we now have those two group addresses that we need. One for switching, one for feedback. They both might have the same name, but you can di differentiate those two via the middle group. So 100 means lightning switching office and 130 means lightning feedback switching and then office. What I also like is that I add a little index to my group address name. So this means that after office, I will then, for example, simply write on off. 
and for feedback switching I can write down for example fs so f for feedback s for switching and with that I also can differentiate by the name for which function they are. So now that we have created those two group addresses we can link them to our group objects. So I will start with the push button sensor there with the on off object which is for switching the feedback is for feedback switching and then to the switching actuator simply copy it on off to on off and in for on off to feedback switching. And with that we have connected those two devices in a way that the push button sensor will send telegrams when we press the first push button and the switching actuator will react to it so it will turn on and turn off the light or the corresponding switching output. Now that this is done we can download everything onto the devices. But before we can do that we first of all have to start KNX Virtual. So therefore I will go to my desktop and there I have the KNX Virtual folder and I will quickly start it. Here you can simply press OK so that it initializes the IP interface that we need. And now here we have the starting page of KNX Virtual. There you can see all the simulated devices. Now there aren't their real names, so switching actuator, dimming actuator, etc. But instead there are IDs of those devices. And these IDs, so D0 to D24, you can also find within the EDS6. So as you can see here, the switching actuator has the ID D7 and the push button sensor has the ID D4. And you can see those also here, D4 and D7. Now this is only the page for programming the devices because there here you have the programming button that you need to press and you can see the physical address the devices are currently associated to. And this is pretty handy because you can already see which physical address does the device has. This is something you won't have at normal KNX devices because there simply is no display on a normal push button sensor where it can show you which physical address the device currently has. Now in order to use those devices you will have to go up here to view and then we will first of all start with the base page. Here at the base page you can see D4, so the simulated push button sensor, as well as here D7, the switching actuator. Later on we will also use all the other views where we also have simulated weather stations, heating actuators and scene controllers etc. But for now we will stick to the base page. Now in order to program the devices I will go back to devices topology so that I can press the programming button and then I have to specify the network connection within the EDS6. So I'll go up here to automatic and here you now can see two options we have. First of all KNX virtual and then my network card, in this case a Wi-Fi card. If you would use the Wi-Fi card as our configured connection then we would use KNX IP and therefore would need a KNX IP router in our network. With the second option here KNX virtual we will use KNX IP tunneling and therefore use the simulated KNX IP interface and build up directly a tunnel into our twisted pair network. Therefore for now we will use KNX virtual later on we will also take a look at KNX IP and KNX IP routers. Now that I have set up my connection I can start to download to the devices. Therefore I will start with the push button sensor and click here on download all. Now what you should see is under pending operations the EDS6 is prompting me to press the programming button. So let us quickly do that. D4, therefore I click here on D4 and now you can see that everything downloads onto the device and if we take a look back here at KNX Virtual you can already see that the push button sensor now has its physical address. What I also want to show you before I start to download to the switching actuator is if you take a look at twisted pair line and devices 
You can see here whether a device is programmed or not because the EDS6 will recognize which informations it downloaded to the device the last time and whether there were changes in between. Now in this case, the push button sensor was programmed with the latest versions and therefore there is no mark missing here. Now let us program the switching actuator. If I click here on the arrow and now I only want to program the individual address, so the physical address. Therefore, I need to press D7. And now only the physical address is programmed, not the parameters itself. You can also see this when I go back to the twisted pair line. Now you see only address and config is marked, but not program parameters and group addresses. Therefore, if I click now on download application, I don't have to press the programming button because now the EDS6 knows the address where it should send the telegrams to. And now also here everything is marked. So let us check if everything works as intended. Therefore I will open KNX Virtual, there I go to base. You can already see that now we can press the first buttons as well as we can see here channel 1. If I press on the right side you can see the light is turned on on the left side it turns off. If I press again on 1, now I can destroy this channel. You can also see that the feedback wasn't sent. So the feedback also represents the correct value here. If I repair it again, you can see the correct feedback is shown here. Turning off, so everything works fine. And with that, we have programmed our first function in KNX, light switching with feedback. So that's it for this video. You now know how you can program light switching in the ADS 6 with KNX Virtual. So I would recommend you to program, for example, the second and third button of this push button sensor for the second and third switching output of the switching actuator so that you do those steps that we did together in this video by your own. Before we take a look at the next functions, I first of all want to show you in the next video the diagnostics tool of the EDS6 as they are pretty useful if, for example, something doesn't work as intended. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, consider a like and subscribe to the channel to get notified for new videos. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask me in the comment section. And I will see you in the next video.